morning, everybody. I like that. Let's try that again. On the count of three, say good morning as loud as you can. One, two, three. Good morning. That's good, Serge. But can everybody do it the same as Serge? Good morning on the count of three. One, two, three. Good morning. That the audio works. So happy you're all here. It's our fourth annual LDV Vision Summit, which is crazy how time flies and how things have changed. And we're going to have some unbelievable speakers here today. I'm Evan Nisselson. That's the Twitter handle. Create as many cool photographs as you can and share them of each of you. It's all about visual technologies revolutionizing business and humanity. And this is our theme and thesis um, since four years ago when we started, and I don't think it's going to change for another 50 years. But what is visual technologies? It's any technology that captures, manages, analyzes, displays, filters, distributes visual data. And the key these days, and even more so in the future, will be leveraging computer vision and artificial intelligence. And we'll talk a lot more about that. Our ecosystem, why we do this, and why we slave, there's a core team of up until three months ago, one, with a lot of other folks, which we'll talk about to put this together. Now we've doubled in size three months ago, so that's very exciting. It's all about all of you, creators, startups, investors, tech execs, media and brand execs, and computer vision and AI experts. There really isn't another summit that brings all of you together to one place. And it's actually really hard to market to all of you because you all are doing different things and have different focuses. But why we try to bring you all together and which has succeeded for the last couple of years is the serendipity of everything that comes out of the interactions from the creators to the tech create to developers, et cetera, to hopefully find ways to collaborate and help each other succeed. Today is a tech deep dive. Tomorrow is more product and business. We've got over 560 people that have registered, 100 more than last year, which is great. Uh, people will come at different times throughout the day. And the goal, inspiration, networking. In the past years, people that have spoken or been in the audience have been recruited by major companies. Many companies have raised capital. Um, we disrupt certain companies, and we empower others, and hope you find investments, investors, and ways to help each other succeed. I couldn't have done this without great collaborators, Rebecca from Cakeworks and Serge from Cornell Tech. Rebecca helps a lot on the video side, Serge on the tech side the first day, but it's a team effort. And Serge is also LDV Capital's expert in residence. In addition, Rebecca is also an advisor of our fund. Another group that we couldn't do this without is our collaborators, our partner sponsors, and media partners. So Cakeworks, Cornell Tech, SVA with this theater, ICP, Amazon Activate, Facebook, Gum Gum, JW Player, and our media partners, Exponential, View, Capter, and VizWorld. And right over there is our king at VizWorld, graphic artist, who's going to be doing some amazing art during our sessions. Wi-Fi, technical issue, it's also on your programs, pretty straightforward. OK, that's the introduction. Who am I? General partner at LDV Capital, I've been an investor for over five years, 18 years as an entrepreneur building four different visual tech businesses. Now you guys are all experts in what visual tech is. From Silicon Valley, New York, and Europe, originally a photographer, still photographing. I've gone from my Nikon F and FM camera to only my camera phone, which probably doesn't surprise you. LDV Capital invests in people building visual technology businesses with deep domain expertise. This is Matt from Clarify. We started in 2012, and everybody said, oh, that's cute, and that's science fiction, and why would anybody focus on a sector that is so small? Well, fortunately, I didn't get scared away, and I like when people say I can't do something, because that's when I know that I'm onto something. Four years later, it is huge and everybody's talking about it. And everybody's building unique companies. Everybody's selling companies. In these sectors are only a couple of examples of the sectors that are here today and tomorrow and that we invest in. Real quickly, a couple examples of some of our companies that we like to invest very early. 
Um, there was two people on the Clarify team when we invested. Pre all of those investors, we invested alongside Qualcomm and Google. Mapillary, there was, I think, three people on the team. And Jan Eric spoke the first year, four years ago here. Sea Machines, automated uh, autonomous maritimes business, which is very exciting, so for workboats and ships, et cetera, et cetera, with some exits. But what's this community about? Why do we do this? Because I believe we can build a community that exponentially helps each other find deals, um, find jobs, and help each other succeed. And that's why we do this summit, and we build tools as well that we'll build, be building more soon. We also have an, uh, a monthly dinner here in New York. 780 people now, half men and half women. It's critical that every dinner of 30 people has half men and women. And we also try to have equal gender in this event, which is really hard, but I think we got to 70-30. Last year was 65-35, uh, uh, or if I'm doing my math right. And hopefully the goal is 50-50, and we work very hard to get fantastic people on both sides. Now, the keynote talk for today, I wrote an article in TechCrunch the other day, the war over artificial intelligence will be won with visual data. Cameras are everywhere. But when people think of cameras, they think about a photo or a video, Instagram or YouTube. But it's really all the visual data, like LiDAR, radar, thermal, x-ray, white light, and others, and even more than I haven't even listed. But what's interesting these days, there is a war to own the camera. We might be biased here and know this, but what's interesting, even in the last couple of weeks, the major companies, and many more that are on this list, I believe are fighting their number one goal is to own the camera. Why is that? Instagram started uh, in what year? 2010 with filters. Snapchat in 2011, filters. Microsoft last year uh, announced Microsoft Pix, which is one of the early cameras apps with AI and computer vision. A couple weeks ago, Amazon announced uh, the Echo Look, which is basically a camera that I believe they want to be the point of sale. Okay, and that, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, Snap recently also added 3D filters for augmented reality. Oh, guess what? Mark says the camera is gonna be their augmented reality platform. Oh, okay, Instagram then does 3D filters. Oh, look, Google, another little company, built uh, their Google Lens, which is gonna replace search from the camera. Once again, the 3D sensor will probably be out later this year from iPhone. But why is this important? All of them fighting over the camera. Because 90% of our, 90% uh, of the data that our brains analyze is visual. Like we talked about earlier, it's all kinds of visual data. Artificial intelligence will not succeed without vision. If artificial intelligence is gonna create human-like, if not better, smarts, they better understand visual data. Therefore, 90% of artificial intelligence will be analyzing visual data, and vision is the killer app. You might believe this because you're here, but in context, the war that's happening with all the major companies is unbelievable. We can go from telescopes to microscopes to see the Earth, to satellite uh, vision, to satellite selfies, which we've talked about a couple years ago, which will come, okay? To all the visual data, all the discussion of autonomous vehicles. If you took out vision, it would be impossible. Smart cities and the internet of eyes is an article I wrote two years ago, which was validated recently. All inanimate objects will have cameras. A year later, Amazon comes out with the look. Let's talk about commerce. We know what this is like. We, we use a credit card all the time these days. Now we're starting to use the phone. But really, the next step is the camera. And there's going to be many interactions that camera will drive. Not only to know who you are, but I am one of those typical men who don't change their styles. Um, I would love to have that red pants every five years, but they go out of style. Why can't Alexa look, tell me, Evan, you've got a hole in your pants. There's two more available of the same size and same brand. Would you like that? I would one click and send it to me. Google's analyzing Lowe's store for virtual reality commerce. 
Who are we? Biometrics could not work without visual data. Jack Ma of Alibaba a couple years ago, this is for his uh, authentication for paying. What if you could pay by selfies? This is something we're going to hear about later with, from Bjorn, who's going to talk, 20-year expert in biometrics. Where are we going? What are the challenges? Who will manage identity? And who will protect our identity? These are all the aspects of anybody can track us. People might say, hey, I'm afraid of that, privacy issues, et cetera, et cetera. Privacy's dead. What I would love is to talk about all the positive things where this is really going to contextually help our lives. Yes, there's negative things in life, but that, in the history of humankind, there's always been negative things. So let's focus on how we can improve our lives with tech. So people in motion, really quickly, autonomous eyes is what I like to call it. There's going to be at least 16 visual senses, and there's a lot of sessions we're going to have with people smarter than me today and tomorrow talking about the technology behind autonomous vehicles. Mapillary is crowdsourcing content and adding signals to the content. So right here is crowdsourced content and analyzing what's happening. Or you have LiDAR that will track more visual data. Or a combination. Once again, they could not work without vision. And more importantly, not just the data, but the computer vision and AI that's going to be uh, delivering smart, hopefully safe vehicles. What about this? Isn't it a pain in the ass to look around the truck and hope you don't get in an accident? Very simple, smart way to help us. Next generation cars are going to talk to each other and communicate what they see. I'd love that. I don't want to drive anymore. I want to be in a car and go someplace and have the car take me there. They're going to communicate all the time with different types of data. Unfortunately, this is what it looks like in many of the cars now, but I obviously, historically, as servers and co-location facilities, everything will get shrunk down. Aircraft, once again. Autonomous maritime. And of course, we might get to this, which some people have seen as well, which is a little scary, but um, if we can be entertained aside from the belly, I'd be happy about it. Once again, Evan, you're crazy. I love when people say this. The ones in green are the things that I've said in the past, even though I don't have all the answers. Being in visual tech for my whole life, since shooting at 13 and 18 years, um, these green ones have happened, and the other ones are, I believe, will happen. The question is when, and who of you will create that technology? The cameras is not the goal. The goal is understanding each other and hopefully improving our lives. There's a project I have called Love the Living of Life, which is why is it that we don't make the moment most out of every single day, every single second, because tomorrow might not come. I came back from a funeral this weekend of my best friend's father, um, and I reiterated why I'm so happy to be here with all of you so I can learn and be inspired. It's just the beginning. Carpe diem. I don't have all the answers, and that's why I love when we all get together once a year to learn from each other. 